Greetings and welcome to another edition of Emerging Tech Talk. I'm your host, Dan York. Today I want to talk a little bit about Skype and their announcement yesterday, March 23rd, 2009, of the beta of a new service called Skype for SIP, or what they're sometimes referring to as SFS. Now, for a long time, I've been critical on my DisruptiveTelephony.com blog around uh, Skype and its walls, the walled garden that it is where it's a proprietary island of connectivity. Now, it's not always been a complete island. Those of you who've been following uh, what we write about here at Voxeo know that we've talked about the inbound Skype connectivity we've had uh, from Skype since the early days of Skype's first developer program back in uh, 2005, 2006. And you can call any of the applications in our developer platform or even in our new tropo.com platform um, from Skype. It's great uh, inbound connectivity to our hosted platform. But that's only been available on our hosted side. What's interesting about Skype for SIP is that it allows anybody with a SIP PBX, uh, IP PBX, call server, call manager, application server, whatever it may be, the ability to go and receive inbound Skype connections. So from a user perspective, the user out on Skype sees it as a Skype name. They just call that Skype name, and to them, it's a Skype, another Skype client. But what it really does is it connects across the Skype cloud to one of Skype's SIP gateways and then connects from the SIP gateway to your on-premise SIP server. So the call comes in just as it would from any other SIP device and you're able to talk to the, uh, the Skype user so you can have that kind of call. The interesting aspect I think for enterprises or corporations, businesses in general, will be that you've now got a way that you can advertise yourself to Skype users um, there have been solutions like this around for a while, some from Voskai, some from another number of other companies, but they typically involved running a premise box that was actually typically running a series of Skype clients to give you quote-unquote Skype trunks to be able to, to interop with your PBX. And there's still a role for those devices because they are um, solutions for premise equipment, PBS, PBXs, etc., that uh, do not have IP, that just have TDM connectivity. They could still use those boxes to be able to connect out to Skype's cloud. But now, if you have a, a server that supports SIP, you'll be able to have a connection directly out into Skype's cloud. Now, the challenge, I think, is that it's only a one-way connection from um, Skype users. So Skype users can call in and they can get to your system. Now what's, but you can't call out to a Skype user. Now you can call out on this Skype for SIP service and basically Skype can be a, a SIP trunking provider for you, a SIP service provider. So you can route your calls across Skype's cloud and out through their PSTN gateways. So you can call uh, numbers on the PSTN, landlines, mobiles, whatever you want to do. So you can use Skype for inbound calls from Skype users and outbound calls to the PSTN. Now, the other aspect is you can also use what we used to call Skype in numbers, but Skype is now calling those uh, online numbers. And so you could get DIDs in about 20 different countries that uh, would connect in uh, through the SIP to Skype's SIP proxies on the edge of their network and then would be routed to, uh, well, to your Skype name, which would then be routed to their uh, to the SIP connection into your SIP server. You know, I'm sure they've, I would have to think they'll do some uh, economies there so when the call comes in from the online number to their SIP gateway, it'll figure out that it needs to reroute it to another SIP gateway and not go across the P2P cloud, I would think, because it's all held in their servers, but we'll have to see how the implementation comes out. But anyway, that's the three pieces. Inbound calls from Skype servers, inbound calls from online numbers, and outbound calls to the PSTN. It doesn't get us to what I would like, which is the ability to go and do outbound calls to Skype endpoints. Now for that, Skype also has its Skype for Asterisk offering, or SFA, which also is in beta and lets you use Asterisk, uh, the open source PBX, with, a, uh, with a, essentially a channel driver in Asterisk speak that would let you do both inbound and outbound connectivity to Skype users. Uh, both of them are interesting, uh, Skype for Asterisk and Skype for SIP. We'll be curious to kind of keep up on what's going on and follow it, try it out. Uh, I've certainly signed up for the beta program, which you can sign up for at Skype for SIP. And I'll be curious to see. In theory, all it should do is require you to configure your premise system to be able to connect out there 
via SIP to Skype's cloud, Skype SIP cloud, and be able to connect that way. No on-site equipment, no software to download, just a simple straight SIP connection. If you go to my disruptivetelephony.com blog, I wrote about this externally, I went into some great detail about uh, the, um, the Skype for SIP offering on the technical side, some of the issues around codecs, some of the other aspects that are there. Uh, it's intriguing. Uh, I enjoy what Skype is doing, partly because they're disruptive in so many ways as far as uh, doing different things. And it'll be interesting to see where this all evolves. I'm pleased they're opening up their walls. I hope that uh, we can continue to see those walls open a bit more and that sooner or later we'll be able to have two-way connectivity out there into the cloud as well. That's all for now. You can read more about this and other things at blogs.voxeo.com slash ETT. If you have feedback about this, you can contact me at dyork at voxeo.com or you can Skype me at D Dan York. And that's all for now. Bye.